Okay, so in this uh, tutorial I'm just going to demonstrate a, a uh, marker removal technique uh, using a, uh, uh, a particular feature of the uh, of the roto node. Um, we can see this uh, this typical shot that's, that I've played out here, just a cache so that we can scrub through it, um, and we can see there that the camera is uh, is moving, um, and as a consequence of that, the uh, the character is intersecting with a whole bunch of these uh, of these markers. The one I'm going to deal with in this is this one here that we can see on the far right. It's a fairly benign marker. For the most part, it's out of the way. There's just that little point there where the hand comes through it. Um, and I'm going to use a, a roto offset process to, uh, to, to remove it. And as I said, there's a feature within the roto node that allows us to do that. The first thing that we need to do is track the shot because obviously we've got to, the, this marker is moving over time uh, from right to left and then there's the intersection point so it needs to be tracked okay what I actually did is I just put a color grade node on there you can see I've just raised the uh, the gain and um, and reduced the uh, the gamma to kind of create a higher contrast just so that this uh, this marker is a little bit more easier for the tracker to pick up on and uh, and actually to save time I've actually ran the tracker I don't want this tutorial to become a tracker a tracker tutorial. Uh, I've got other tutorials that deal that go to town on this particular node. If I double click it and we just look at the motion path you can see that it pretty much tracked in a routine way until the intersection point. I just had to pause it round about there and then start it again round about there and then uh, and then in the middle just eyeball it and obviously you can move it if you want it to be, uh, if, if, the, if, it, if it has deviated, if maybe you've got six or seven frames that are unpopulated with keyframes and you may need to just make some adjustments in there. In this particular case I think there's only two or three frames that are unoccupied and so I didn't really need to do anything with it. Anyway that's the, uh, that's the track. I've done that to save time because it's taken about three minutes to track this because of the colour correction. So. Um, so I've just done that to save time. So there's our there's our track going through. Okay, just jump back to the first frame and turn that off. The next thing that I need to do is I need to apply my roto node. So I'm just going to select my plate and type O to bring down my roto. Um, I don't want that grade. That's just purely for the tracker. Um, and I'll connect my viewer to the uh, to, to the roto node directly. Okay. So this is the color. This is the original color. And I'm going to apply a roto node on this first frame. So I'm just going to use an ellipse. So choose the ellipse from in here. If I just put my cursor in the center of this and I hold down Shift, Control, and Alt, I can actually draw out from the center of that. And this is really useful with tracking markers to be able to do that. And I'm just going to the boundaries and just a little bit beyond. Also, if I type E at the same time, it'll automatically apply some feather. Okay, so as I said, I'm going to use a technique within the roto node, which basically allows it to um, allows it to sample uh, an area of the um, uh, of the background uh, from itself. So from the background plate itself. So if I actually come into the into the shape, we can see that I can choose the source. And if I choose background here, what it's now doing is it's now populating the um, the roto spline with the contents of the um, with the contents of the uh, uh, the back the backdrop, uh, I do need to set this now to RGBA so that it's actually uh, creating that. Uh, so it's actually populating the, the red, green, blue, and alpha data. I could actually just use the RGB, um, but I will I will actually stick with the RGBA because I might want to gather my alpha later on. And if I use RGB, then it won't actually generate an alpha for this particular spline. Okay, so I've set the I've set the output to RGBA. I've set my shape now to sample from the background, so it's filling this in with the background. It does; it looks identical at the moment because it's basically on top of itself. It's filling in; it's filling in from itself. But if I actually come to the clone tab and we just zoom out a little bit, you can see that when you select the clone, you get this little gizmo, and it's a transform gizmo. And what this means is actually you can offset the sample area. So if I just start to type, for example, on the y-axis, and I just start to add in some values there, you'll start to see the patch shift in. Okay, and what that, what's actually happening there is I'm now sampling from a different area. So if 
I come in that direction, I'm obviously sampling from uh, from from above that, and if I come that way, I'm sampling from below that. Okay, so that's the way this works. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to sample from maybe maybe 50 pixels there. So essentially, what it's doing now is that it's grabbing um, it's grabbing a piece of a piece of texture from somewhere down here rather than from itself. So it's effectively, it's created the patch. Now, obviously, as this moves on, it's going to poke out from behind because obviously it's not tracked. That's why we did the tracker. Um, and this is really simple. All we need to do is we just need to connect the attribute, the transform attribute from the tracker to the transform attribute of the roto. So I'll get the roto and enable the transform. And if you take a look at that, you can see that the keyframes are enabled, but there is no uh, animation on those keyframes. I'm making sure that I'm on frame one. That's where I drew my uh, spline. So that's my reference frame. And I'm just going to double click my tracker. So my tracker is also in the properties panel. And again, if we come into the transform settings, we can see the translate. But this time, if I scrub, you can see that this is dynamic because this has obviously uh, undergone a tracking process and it's basically um, it's, it's basically transforming uh, that, uh, that, that, uh, that tracker. OK, so if I just make sure again I'm on frame one and then I just come to this animation button here, hold down control and then just drag that onto the translate button of the roto node and let go. You can see this little green line, which basically means that we've created an expression which now links the two together. Okay, so what that means now is if I just kill these off, so we see if I start to scrub through now, you can see that you can see the tracking marker there uh, because it's a slight different color, but you can see that it's basically following the track. Okay. I like to use a, a stabilization approach to, uh, to quality control these uh, these tracks. If, to do that, I just copy that tracker, paste it, and connect it up to the Roto node, and then connect my viewer to, to that. And then I'll take this tracker and I'll set it to stabilize. What that basically means is that now, rather than um, rather than the the track moving. It basically holds it in position and brings the plate across. And the advantage of that is I can basically look at the area where that tracking marker is or should be, and I can watch it for integrity. And you can see the issue there. You can see um, you can see that the sample is actually picking up on a section of the hand. So this tracking area here is actually grabbing the hand. So that clone site is probably not going to be the best going forward and I'm probably going to need to sample from above uh, sorry sorry from below rather than from above. Okay, so yeah. Um, and also we saw a little bit of discoloration uh, which is obviously uh, because it's sampling from a different area where the lighting is slightly different on the green backdrop and therefore the colour correction is slightly different. I'm sure a, a Kia would uh, would address that, um, but often in a uh, in a production environment you'd be expected to get this absolutely bang on and and, and submit to the uh, to the keying department an absolutely perfect uh, green backdrop. So I'll just go through that process about to actually correct that. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is. I'm happy with the integrity of the tracker. I'm, I'm happy that that's moving correctly now, so I'll kill that off. Um, what I want to do is I want to come back to my roto node and I want to sample. Rather than sampling from above, I'm going to sample from below, probably about the same amount, so I'll just put that as a negative value. And just check it through again. I just want to come to that bit where intersects and we can see now because it's sampling from below rather than above we get sorry above rather than below we, we're not getting any degradation inside that spline so that's good we do have to obviously deal with this we've got some little bits of muckiness to deal with and that's pretty straightforward we just come to the um, this is basic roto now. We just come to the last good frame, which is on frame 57. And in our roto, we just add a key. And then we come to our first good frame after the intersection, which is there, 60, and add another key. And then in between, we can now play fast and loose. So I can maybe just ease that feathering back 
on this side and maybe just flatten off the but be careful not to reveal the the marker something like that and on this side the same so I can just pull it back again if I pull it back too far you can see that I'll reveal the marker so probably not a bad idea is to um, is to is to pull it out out of the way and make some minor adjustments to the feather like so and then get the whole thing and push it back into place like that type Q to hide the overlay okay maybe just a little bit tight I'm happy I'm happy with that okay so what we should see now is we should see that going going through quite nicely. You can see it's a little bit darker there, but we can see that that intersection's quite nice there now. Okay, so to finish off, let's just deal with this uh, with this marker being a little bit darker. Okay, this is pretty straightforward stuff. Um, what we can do is we can add a merge node and then merge this patch on top of the background. The first thing we get is a pre-mult error. Um, it's pre-multing the alpha. Uh, so I just need to come back to my roto node and tell it to pre-multiply by the RGB. And now we can see that slight degradation. And all we would do is just basically put a grade in between the merge and the roto. So in this case a grade node. And we can see now that if I start to, um, if I start to gain down Default. I start to gain down obviously we darken and I start to gain up we lighten so what I want to do is I want to lighten this slightly so I'm just going in tenths sorry I'm darkening there by mistake my bad and I think around about there 1.02 we've got that okay you can see it's slightly different there, so this may involve a little bit of keyframing of that color correction. I don't want to spend a great deal of time on it because it's not really the focus of this, although obviously you would need to know how to address that, uh, but I don't want to spend a lot of time finessing it. This is just a demonstration. And you can see it's maybe just a little bit too bright now. you can see the track looking a lot better so if we just uh, if we again just play that from the top there we can see that our marker's completely gone and we can see that the hand is going through there just nicely okay so that is how to execute the roto offset method using nuke hope you found it useful and i hope you'll be able to apply it to your own projects